Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. And today I want to talk about three habits of a successful bass fisherman. Stay tuned, it's gonna be awesome. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. This is more or less gonna be my opinion on what I think it takes to be a successful bass fisherman. And not only that, but a successful tournament bass fisherman, which is kind of what this channel is focused on, is just becoming a better bass fisherman. Now guys, before we get too far into the video, several of you guys have asked about the bass hat. And you have asked if I was gonna come out with different colors in the bass hat, and I have. Traditionally, I've always had the camo and white one, which you guys love, uh, but now I have this black one, which is like a black and cryptic, very cool, and also this blue and gray one, which is also really cool. So anyways, if you guys want to purchase the Bass app and support the channel, click on the link in the description below, and you can really help this channel grow. So let's get into the video, and this is really, again, going to be my opinion on what I think it takes to be a successful bass fisherman. And guys, I've been fishing for a long, long time. I've been tournament bass fishing since I was 15 years old, so I've been tournament bass fishing now for 16 years. And I've also watched an extreme amount of tournament fishing on TV and online and everywhere. I watched a lot of YouTube videos, and I really feel like there's three main habits that if you wanna become a really successful bass fisherman and a successful tournament bass fisherman, these are the three habits that you need to have. So let's get right into those habits. So habit number one is fishing with an opened mind. Now, if you guys watch a lot of videos or tournament fishing, you might hear this term a lot where basically guys have said, I just need to go out and fish with an open mind today. Now, you hear a lot of successful bass fishermen. I'm talking about the Brian Thrifts of the world, the Jacob Wheelers of the world, the Kevin Van Dams of the world. Some of the most successful tournament anglers that have ever lived, you hear them say this a lot about fishing with an open mind. So I kind of want to discuss what exactly that means. So what it means to fish with an open mind is when you go out and you're fishing any given day or any given tournament day, you're not fully focused on one particular bait or one particular pattern or one particular type of cover. You're fishing very open-minded. You're fishing very free. Meaning, hey, if you're going down a riprap bank and you're chucking a square bill and, and maybe that's how you caught them the day before or even the hour before, that doesn't mean that if you come up to a, a, a lay down tree that's on that riprap bank that you shouldn't pick up a different bait. Maybe you should pick up a jig in this case and flip that jig into that tree and not just continue to crank because you might miss out on a fish that didn't want to hit that crankbait. Or maybe, like I said, you're fishing down a riprap bank with a square bill and the conditions go from cloudy to very calm and still. So maybe instead of throwing a square bill down that bank, maybe you pick up a shaky head and start working a shaky head along those rocks. That's kind of what fishing with an open mind is. You're not, you're not focused on one lure. You're not focused on one particular type of cover. You're not focused on being shallow or being deep. You're fishing with an open mind. And what I've seen a lot in my own tournament fishing is that this really is very beneficial if you can harness the power of fishing with an open mind. And what I mean by that is a lot of times when I'm preparing or practicing for a bigger tournament, I'll go out a day or two, you know, maybe if that's an open type event, I'll go out three or four days in advance. And I'm really trying to figure out what the bass are doing. That is the exact mindset that you always want to have. What are the bass doing today? What are the bass doing in this given hour at, get, at this given time? Don't get so focused on catching them a certain way. A lot of times what I found, especially at the beginning of me tournament fishing, is that I would go out during a practice day and I would have a phenomenal day, right? I'd catch two or three doing it this way and then I'd try something new and I'd catch two or three doing that and it just kept going back and forth like that, I was just constantly experimenting. But then I would get to the tournament and I was focused, hey, I caught him right here and I caught him this way, so I'm gonna do that. Or I caught him right here and I caught him this way, so that's what I'm gonna do. That's when you get 
closed-minded. When you're when you're completely focused on catching them a certain way, uh, on a certain bait, in a certain location. And that is not what you want to do. You always want to fish open-minded. Basically, the concept is you always want to be experimenting when you're out there fishing. You always want to be trying new things. Even if you're fishing a tournament, this is a good thing to do because patterns change, the fish change, everything changes constantly. And so if you can be ahead of that change or at least change with the conditions, you're gonna be a lot better bass fisherman and definitely a lot better tournament fisherman. So always fish with an open mind. Be willing to change, be willing to experiment and never get close-minded to a certain thing. All right, guys, so the second habit that I think is really, really important if you wanna become a better bass fisherman is fish your strengths, okay? Fish the things that you love to do. Fish the things that you do the best. Now, this might sound kind of like the opposite of what I just said about fishing open-minded, but everyone who's a bass fisherman has several different techniques, several different lures that they have a lot of confidence in. Whether maybe that's a jig and a spinner bait and a, and a shaky head, or maybe that's a, a, a deep crank bait and a drop shot, whatever it may be, there's probably several different techniques that you kind of really like to do. Maybe you feel like you just know a little bit more than, than a different person. This can also be that maybe you just really prefer to fish shallow water. Maybe your strength is fishing shallow, or maybe your strength is fishing deep. Maybe your strength is using your electronics and finding fish offshore. Now we see this a lot in tournament bass fishermen. You kind of have guys that are shallow water junkies. You know, you kind of, you look at like John Cox and you look at Jason Christie. Uh, these are guys who really like to fish shallow and they do really well when they fish shallow. Then you have guys who, you know, primarily like to fish off the bank. They like to find off the shore type stuff. What I'm saying here is you have to fish your strength. Now this doesn't mean that you can't fish open-minded, right? Maybe your strength is fishing shallow. So maybe you like maybe maybe you're fishing shallow and you're fishing a spinner bait in some muddy water and you come up to a lay down tree and you pick up a jig, right? You're still fishing your strength, you're still fishing shallow water, but you're fishing open-minded, you're fishing freely. So I think it's really, really important to fish your strength. And I've kind of seen the same thing happen with me. So for me, coming from Ohio, we do a lot of different techniques all the time because it is so hard to catch five fish in any given tournament. You know, sometimes I do have to catch two shallow and two deep and one doing this and one doing that and you're all over the place. So finding a strength I think is really, really important. If you can do a lot of different things really well, that's great, but sometimes you can kind of get caught in this position where it's like, man, should I go shallow or should I go deep? Should I go flip reeds or should I go crank offshore grass? And sometimes that can be not the best thing to do, especially when you're tournament fishing and you're just trying to find a couple of areas that have fish. Sometimes those guys who, to focus on their strengths, maybe that's staying shallow or staying deep, they stick with that and they find the fish that they know how to catch the best. And that's what I'm talking about. You have to find your strength. Not all the fish in the lake do the same thing at the same time. So find your Find your strength, figure out what your strength is, and fish your strengths. Because if you can get on something that you love doing in a tournament, you're gonna do well in that tournament, I guarantee it. For me, one of those things is top water fishing. If I can find a top water bite on the lake that I'm fishing, I typically can do really well. I really feel like I understand top water lures and I really love throwing top water lures. And so if I can find some sort of top water, I am feeling at home, I love it, it's my jam, okay? Guys, I'm about to come out with the first of a long series of top water videos coming out and it's gonna be all about spook fishing. And so that should come out in the next couple of weeks, maybe when things start to get a little bit warmer, I'll come out with that video. So make sure to subscribe to see those videos. All right guys, so fishing open-minded is very important. Fishing your strength is very important. And I think that if you can do those just two habits, if you can stick to those two things in your tournament fishing, I really think you're gonna be a lot more successful of a bass fisherman. So the next thing that I think is extremely, extremely important, and I think that this is a habit that every bass fisherman should have, and that is that your equipment, your tackle, your hooks, all of your equipment must be 
perfect. Guys, I cannot tell you how many fish that literally stick in my mind that if I had caught that one fish in that one tournament, it would have made a huge, huge difference. Or even that one fish over the course of an entire season, what that can do for you. So making sure your equipment is absolutely perfect so you have the best chance to catch everything that you hook is vital. Guys, I can't even tell you how important this is because for me and myself, just a couple of years ago, I was fishing in the Bassmaster Opens, and guys, this one fish, I hope it doesn't haunt me forever, but this one fish, if I had put it in the boat, I would have been in the Bassmaster Elite Series right now. I was fishing Lake Champlain. It was one of the last tournaments of the year, and I had a really poor first day. I only had like 12 pounds. I was in like a hundred some spot in that tournament, and the second day I went out, I completely changed gears and went largemouth fishing. And I actually got on a really good dock bite on Lake Champlain in the Dead Sea. And I was flipping around to Cinco and I was catching a lot of fish and I started catching big fish. I ended up with about 16 or 17 pounds that day, but I had a two pounder in that bag. And guys, towards the end of the day, I flipped underneath this dock and I seen my Cinco go boom. I seen the line jump. And all day I had been thinking, I was using 16 pound line to flip these docks, which, you know, it's clear water, so I liked a little bit lighter line, but I kept thinking, man, I should probably step it up to 20 pound line because there's a lot of things around this docks. There was grass, there was rocks, there was the dock themselves. And I kept thinking, man, I should probably step it up to 20. I don't think these fish are line shy. And I flip into this dock and the fish goes bam, and I set the hook and dude, a six pounder comes out from underneath this boat. And I wrestle this fish all the way, all over the place, and I get it right up to the boat, and I literally go to scoop it. I have my hand under the belly of this six pound fish, and it makes one last kick, one last final kick. It goes down, and somehow my line breaks, and a six pounder swims off. I literally can watch this fish swim off because it's, I'm only in like two foot of water, and I watch it swim off. And guys, that year, I actually tied Greg De Palma for the points in the Bassmaster Elite Series. If I catch that one fish, I probably would have I probably would have jumped up 40 or 50 places in that tournament, which means I would have got 40 or 50 more points, and I would have been in the Bassmaster Elite Series. And guys, like I said, I hope this doesn't haunt me forever, but guys, that's why it is so important that your equipment must be perfect. It is so important to retie knots throughout the day. It is so important to make sure you have sharp hooks, to make sure you have the right rod, the right reel, the right line. Guys, your, your equipment is everything because like I said, one fish in a tournament can literally be the difference between doing poorly and winning that tournament. Or in my case, one fish over the course of a season can mean getting in the Bassmaster Elite Series and not getting in the Bassmaster Elite Series. So guys, equipment must be perfect. If you guys can go out and you can fish open-minded, fish your strengths, and keep your equipment perfect, you're gonna be a very successful tournament bass fisherman. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if it was kind of long, but please, if you did like this video, hit the thumbs up down below. Leave a comment if you have any questions. Please don't forget to subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys in the next video.